government job out there and they have to go and work in the really real world. So, but I'm getting off topic there. We're talking about campus carry and concealed carry and uh, the Second Amendment. So, let's continue on topic. And then I'm going to have one more topic to discuss after we uh, talk Second Amendment here. But uh, I was looking through MRC TV's uh, various videos that they have posted on YouTube. And I noticed that uh, Dan Joseph, who does some great work, had another uh, clip up posted yesterday. And uh, before I get into playing this, um, one part of the audio may be a little bit difficult. So uh, do yourself a favor if you can't hear it very clearly and go ahead and go over to YouTube and look up MRC TV or look up Dan Joseph and look for his latest video entitled Gun Grabbers Use Kids as Anti-NRA Props. Um, and that's exactly what's happening in this. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, there was a gun grabber meeting or a uh, pro-gun control meeting and they were parading kids around dressed in certain costumes and uh, saying that the kids are uh, pro-gun control advocates and trying to use these kids to get them to be with uh, policymakers and legislators uh, parading them around and getting the pictures taken and then uh, trying to further uh, the propaganda to try to catch the politicians and trap them into uh, advocating what the group is pushing for and then they have it on record that you know they claimed this so now all of a sudden they think that they're going to be able to push it into the platform yeah which i guess some people might be so weak other ones may say hey i was there i listened to what they said i took a picture it doesn't mean i support them it means i listened to their concerns and you know it's along with the concerns of many other people and then made whatever decision but uh, that would be what a smart politician would do. Anyway, let's uh, give a listen to the audio of uh, Dan Joseph's latest clip here about the uh, anti-NRA kids. Hi, everybody. This is Dan Joseph with MRC TV. Earlier this week, the activist group Moms Rising held an event on Capitol Hill. Many of these moms brought their children with them, and those kids are dressed up like doctors because this group supports Dr. Vivek Murthy. Dr. Vivek Murthy's nomination is stalled in the U.S. Senate in part for his support of an assault weapons ban. The local news stations here in D.C. actually covered a lot of what the activists said when they were standing at the podium speaking. The Senate should not be listening to an extremist gun lobby on the issue of who will serve as the guardian of our nation's health. Are caving to a lobby that has nothing to do with public health. That lobby is the National Rifle Association. But it was what happened after they came off of the podium that really caught our attention. And those kids are dressed up like doctors because this group supports Dr. Vivek Murthy. What are you doing here today? Uh, not sure. No. Do you think do you think it's okay that you're sort of using it as a prop for to protest the NRA and when he doesn't even know what's going on today? He actually does know what's going yeah. on, but what's going sometimes on? he gets pretty shy. Do you know what the NRA stands for? Uh, 
No. No, no idea. Do you know who the guy who's running for, who's nominated for Surgeon General is? No, no idea. So what's, it's a, he's just sort of a prop, right? Yeah, um, that's not really fair. He's no. six years old. Um, so he really, does, so does he understand what's happening today? Did we, did we talk about, um, about, uh, the... The, um, no, sir, harassing a child is actually pretty inappropriate. Child. I'm just trying to figure out why where, all these kids are dressed up as doctors to try where, to make a political point. Where are you with MRCTV? Because it's child health and a public health crisis that it's like you know that no child should have to suffer from gun violence. Okay, so but it, it's, it's just the children. Where are all the uh, where are the adults that are not doctors who are dressed up like doctors today? Uh, not a, I'm an adult. I'm an adult who is a real well, doctor. doctor but where, Sorry, where are you from? A media research center. We tell. We heard, you, okay. we heard you talking in there about how you wanted to get pictures with all these little kids dressed up as doctors, sort of using them as props, right? But they don't really know what's going on here. They don't know what the NRA is. They don't know who the Surgeon General is. So but you know what's going on. Are you right? using this? Yeah. This Thank you for coming. We'd like to direct all questions to our communications director. Gun violence is a is a public health risk. Is a uh, is using a gun to defend yourself preventative care? Is it preventative care? I think that is really conflating the issues, it's but we're happy to send you... To prevent, your, to prevent gun violence against yourself, is that preventative care? Sure, we're happy... We're it happy is not preventative care. Why not? What's the difference? It is not preventative care. It's not. You're using, you're, you're using a gun to protect yourself from somebody who has a gun pointed at you. That's not preventative care? No, it is not. With gun violence... You know, I really think that this interview is over. You're twist... You're really we have twisting have to preventative health. You're twisting okay. preventative health very irresponsibly. Right, got it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. How about that, folks? That uh, gentleman who claims to be a doctor telling Dan Joseph that he's uh, perverting the term preventative health when uh, he himself is the one perverting the term um, health issue. Sorry, guys, but the only real health issue a gun uh, presents is... When you have your ranges, most uh, bullets, most projectiles that uh, what guns fire are made out of lead, and that's a health risk. So when you have your, uh, your ranges, there should be some kind of a backstop where the lead gets collected in a, uh, in a good kind of sandy background that uh, every once in a while they go through and dig the lead out so, and... Uh, collect it up and put it someplace so that it doesn't get wet and uh, leach wa uh, lead into the water table. That's your your public health concern. There's no such thing as gun violence. Sorry. My guns are not violent. They're inanimate objects. They sit there. They don't do a dang thing. They're no more violent than my hammer is violent when it's sitting in my toolbox or my steak knives are violent when they're sitting in my my knife block they're not even violent when they're cutting up a steak so uh, not seeing how guns are some kind of a health care crisis them saying that the NRA is lobbying on something that has nothing to do with with health because they're a gun lobby well then the people that are responsible for health and preventative medicine need to stay in their lane and quit directing their um, diatribe and rhetoric against inanimate objects I, mean, I could understand if uh, these were squirt guns filled up with leaded paint that kids were going around and shooting in each other's milk, then you'd have an issue. But uh, by and large, most guns don't hurt anybody, ever. They're one of those things that are, uh, it's better to have and never need than need once and not have. And that's the, the pure and simple truth of it. And that comes from somebody who carried a gun for years and years as part of my job. And I uh, worked a job in a, a rather uh, dangerous areas. 
And uh, yes, there were times I had to fire back. But there were also um, some of my deployments where I didn't have to shoot at all. Wasn't shot at, at least not with a firearm. Um, and was not shot at by some kind of a target that I could easily identify and fire back to. But, uh, you know, that was that situation. And none of those were my private firearms. Those stayed uh, locked up and secured at home when I was off in these dangerous places. So, yeah, think about that. And uh, th there are police officers who have never had to draw down on anybody. They do their qualification and everything. But they, they could tell you that they've never actually had to pull and draw down. Um, I'm sure there are plenty that have, but uh, there are also those that haven't. Otherwise, you know, that the, the firearm is an inanimate object, especially when it's locked and cleared. Of course, you should always treat it as though it's loaded, but a smart gun owner keeps their weapon locked and cleared until it's uh, needed. But um, that's just my two cents on this whole thing. We got so many people who hate our Constitution, hate people who have liberty, just have this belief that people should not be allowed to make up their own minds and be responsible for their own lives and their own actions. And they think that they have the right to uh, dictate to other people how they should live and what they should do. They won't let people live by their own moralities. Especially when you're, when you're talking usually about very moral people. Them being told, you're a moral person, but you own a gun, so you must be evil. Not true. And does that mean that that moral person is going to go around and start shooting sinners and evildoers? Chances are no. So that's... Uh, kind of my two cents there on uh, the whole Second Amendment and current issues. So uh, go ahead and write your state level legislators as well as your your federal legislators and try to chime in a little bit there on uh, going back to a national concealed carry or national uh, constitutional carry or at least one on the statewide level or at the very least you know allow open carry and concealed carry um within your state as well as uh, on college campuses within your state. Let's uh, let our young ladies be able to protect themselves against the bad people out there who will take the opportunities to do evil in areas where they perceive that the women are undefended and college campuses are one of the biggest areas where that happens. Talking uh, about dangerous areas or maybe not so dangerous areas depending on how you look at it over at buzzpo there's a, a good article there talking about a group that calls themselves the border convoy and they started in marietta california which was the site of where all the citizens gathered up and stopped the buses full of uh, illegals from housing the illegals in their their hometown there until they could uh be uh, processed and what was going to happen to them be determined when they turn the buses around. Well, this border convoy started up uh, there in Marietta, California with the goal of traveling across the border states and kind of touring some of the more dangerous areas along the border and route, at least wherever the, uh, the um, highways could bring them near the border. They started in California, went through Arizona. They stopped in the Phoenix area and did a couple of things around John McCain's offices, etc. And continued through Arizona and through New Mexico. And then they got to El Paso, Texas. And that's where they started having problems. Because there are a lot of people who don't agree with them for one reason or another. Um... I don't know exactly what facts the border convoy is uh, is putting out as far as what it knows about the illegal immigration, etc. 
or even the crime rates in border towns. I do know that a lot of the border towns in and around Texas are relatively crime free. When crimes do happen, they tend to be either something very petty or something cartel related. But it's not necessarily an everyday thing. In some places it is, in others it's not. So you can't just sit there and say that our border area is a war zone with people shooting back and forth because that is not the truth. Do we have criminal out, criminals coming across the border? Yes. Are there terrorists coming in with the other illegals and sneaking into the United States across our borders? Yes. Are they going to come across our border and do something right there? No. Their plan is to get in, get with some sleeper cell somewhere, and stage an action in the future. It's not to do something as soon as they get across the border. So there isn't a bunch of IEDs and stuff going on on the border every day. It just is not that bad. No. Do bad things happen? Yes. Are kids being uh, trafficked? Are there young ladies and young boys, for that matter, being tied down to trees and raped in front of the rest of the group so that the rest of the group knows to mind their P's and Q's and do what they're told? Yes, that happens. I guarantee there's at least one rape tree going on every night somewhere along the border between Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. Somewhere along there. That's a big area. Um, there's probably more than one, but I couldn't tell you how many. I can just guarantee there's at least one. That, but that's a long distance, guys. Anyway, um, this group hit uh, El Paso. And they were originally told to avoid El Paso at all costs because they were not going to get a warm welcome, blah, blah, blah. Well, they went through uh, El Paso anyway. And then they uh, stopped in a town called Van Horn and spent the evening there. Um, and they were warned that uh, cartels had put their uh, intelligence people, their trackers on them. And were, they were being watched. And uh, then the group alleges that they were harassed a little bit while they were staying at a hotel. And uh, it was probably cartel related. Now, other things have happened to the group. And some so-called news outlets have done some checking of the facts of the group's story and attempted to completely debunk it. Well, it's come out that while the fact checking that these groups did did provide accurate facts the way they framed them they were checking the wrong facts instead of checking the actual truth of the matter they were checking something else that that they heard through rumor instead of you know getting actual information so that's gone back and forth but this group was run off the road by some pro-open borders uh, individuals, some pro-amnesty individuals. And when they were run off the road, they uh, were able to convince the gentlemen or the people to get out of their way, and they got back on the road and started driving, and then they got pulled over by police. This whole convoy pulled over by police because evidently the person that uh, forced them off the road turned around and called and said that there were brandishing firearms turned out not to be true and then uh, things kind of continued on well if you go over to Buzzville I've got over written over there the border convoys actual um, story and if you check those facts versus the hyperlinks of the uh, the stories coming out from other news agencies you'll see the uh, discrepancies there um, first of all, the locations that they checked where they said, well, there's no call place there. Well, no, there wasn't. It was here that it happened. You checked the wrong data. So make up your own mind based on uh, the evidence back and forth. But there's a lot of conflicting information out there, folks. And that should go with everything. Keep your eyes open. Look for the conflicting information. Take a look at the facts and make up your own minds. And you'll do fine. Keep your eyes and ears open. Use your brain working. 
And then when you got it, go ahead and open your mouth. Speaking of mouth.